Let us now create the shapes for the different levels of detail of our kettle. We will proceed by using the exact same method as used for the automatic LOD calculation for sculpted prints. We will first create the medium level of detail by removing every second row and column of vertices from the initial mesh. Please remember that this mesh uses the exact same topology as a sculpted frame, hence creating the LOD meshes is easy. We will later see that creating LODs for arbitrary meshes adds some complexity to the process. At the end the medium level of detail contains only one quarter of the vertices which are used for the original object. I will repeat this exact same procedure again, but now I start from the medium level, and I will end up with the low level of detail. I do this once more for the lowest level, but I only remove the rows, and keep the columns unchanged. Please note that for the sculpty this lowest level of detail is always reduced to 6 times 6 faces, but I have chosen to spend a few faces more, so that the rounded body of the kettle looks a bit nicer. Hence the lowest level of detail for our kettle now contains 5 times 8 faces. Of course, we must also create level of detail shapes for the handle. But note that this is not so straightforward as shown for the kettle, because I already used a small scalp mat of 8 times 32 faces. The handle changes its level of detail only after the second LOD switch, so there are only two levels to be created for it. And now it is time to test our work. Note that the mesh is on the right side, and the skeleton is on the left. While moving away we can see that the LOD transitions for the mesh always appear before the same transitions get activated for the sculpty. We have proved that we can create a mesh with the same behavior like a sculpted prim. Let us check how many prims we have to pay for it. Here we see that this object is a link set made out of two prims. But the prim equivalent is high up in the air and currently counts 15 prims. Compared to the two prims for the sculpty object this is a lot more. Let us see why the prim equivalent is so high. Maybe the debug option show advanced builder options can help us here. Now we can see that the mesh is so expensive because its physics weight is so high. But we did not specify any physics yet. So what else can we try now? Let us get back to the importer and open the physics tag. Now press the analyze button to see which physics mesh was actually used for our object. We already can see the physics mesh in the previewer. Remember that the physics mesh is needed to define the collision borders. This is where other physical objects get bounced as soon as they approach the kettle. Let us now explicitly tell the importer that we want to use the least complicated physics mesh, based on the lowest level of detail. Please ignore the red dots and lines in the previewer for a moment. We will get back to them in the next chapter. Now analyze the physics mesh. Then simplify. The resulting physics mesh looks simple enough for our purposes. Let us import the object again and see if the physics cost has become lower. Yes, we see that the physics cost has fallen down to only 1.7. And hence the prim equivalent has also been reduced significantly. 
Now it has a value of 4, compared to 15, as it was before. Let us face it. The object looks like a sculpted frame, but costs twice as much as the sculpty object. This is disappointing. But we are not yet at the end of meshes. Indeed we just have started. Let us get back to the importer now. Here we see that this object creates a resource cost of about 5. But as we have already learned in the previous tutorial, resource cost comes mainly from the number of faces which are used in the level of detail meshes. So we have to ask ourselves, can we reduce the number of faces, but keep the overall object shape intact? The answer is, yes. But now we have to leave the world of sculpted prints behind us, and enter the world of mesh, 